What's up guys, my name's Luke and welcome back to Motion and Design. So yeah, this is the second tutorial in remaking the Lord of the Rings. Uh, yeah, and for this one we're going to be doing this kind of liquid rock effect where the rocks are kind of moving throughout other rocks. I think of all the things I've ever posted, this has been the one where most people have asked for a tutorial on. So yeah, um, and also just want to say thanks for all the support in the previous video. It's been doing pretty well, and yeah, I am glad you guys like it and enjoyed this tutorial. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one as well. Uh, yeah, if you want to support the channel, please consider giving the video a like and consider subscribing. And if you want to support it even more and get access to uh, project files and some other tutorials, my Patreon is in the link in the bio. But yeah, let's get straight into this tutorial. Cool, so let's start off here by creating a XP system. So yeah, I know the previous tutorial was all done with Cinema 4D. Unfortunately, this one is all done with X particles. Uh, but yeah, I still think it's pretty cool. Um, you might be able to get a similar effect. Actually, no, sorry. You won't be able to get a similar effect with the um, image that Cinema 4D has because of the fact that there's no flip fluids inside of Cinema 4D yet. But I mean, given another update, and I think we will be getting a flip fluid, seeing as though the last update we got smoke and pyro. But yeah, let's get straight into this again. Let's start off by making it a box. And let's set the size to 200 by 5 by 200. We just kind of want a little box like that. Then let's create another box on top of it. Let's make this 205, 205, and I guess we can make this like 50. Let's bring it so that there's just a gap at the bottom, and this is going to be our collider. So it's called collider. We can add a display tag onto it for now. I mean, this obviously is not necessary. It's more just so you can see it and make it into lines, just so we can see the, the bounding box over here. Or you can just hide it, uh, whichever one works for you. Let's start off by adding a Cydium XP Collider tag, and that should be fine for now. Then inside of our menu, if we had to press play, the particles gonna go everywhere. We can just change that to go from our normals from outside to inside. And now they should all bounce within our box. But we don't want it to be like that. Let's change it from rate to shot and then change the type from random. Let me just turn the speed first. If I press play now, they're just going to be randomly over there. But if we change this to hexagonal, they're going to be evenly spaced. Awesome. Let's change our radius from 1 and a variation of 0.5 just so we get some variety over here and a lot more particles. So these are all just dots at the moment and that's not really nice for visualizing what we're trying to do. So if we have to go over here into our display, we can change this to spheres. And now we can get an idea of the size of all these little particles. So you'll notice that in the Lord of the Rings thing, if we had to look over here, there's like a variety of different colors to the rocks. So we can achieve that quite easily by going over here into the color mode and changing it to use shader. So now we can load up either an image, so you can go and create an image if you want to. But for this, I think we can get a really cool effect just by using noise. So I got a pretty cool effect by making the global scale a thousand and then choosing the stuffle option. I'm going to get a look like this. So if I press play game, look at that. We got some cool variations in the color. Uh, we can make this a little bit more contrasty. If you want, uh, you can always just use this as a reference when editing these. But yeah, I think for now this is fine. I think you guys should go in and change this about and try other noises over here because you can get a variety of different results. But for my render, I think I use this. Cool. So let's make this liquidy. So we can do that by going up here and adding some dynamics. We're going to add in a XP fluid FX. And now when you press play, you notice that it kind of pushes um, the particle apart, but it doesn't really fall down. That's because we need to add gravity to the scene. So it's got modifiers, add gravity, and now when we press play, it falls down. So you'll notice that there's a lot of bouncing. Uh, we can fix that quite easily by going over here into the collider and bringing the bounce down to zero. So now when you press play, there's no bounces, although there might be like little jittering like this. We can easily fix that by going to Command D, uh, going to X particles, and then turning up our subframe steps. I found that just increasing it to two solves the problem. 
Uh, but yeah, depending on your scene, you might need to increase this by a bit more. Uh, I think for this tutorial, I'm going to change this back down to one just so that we can work a little bit faster. Cool. So this is our quote unquote water rocks. So let's change this to water rocks over here. And then let's go in and add another emitter. And let's call this snake. I'm calling it snake because it kind of moves like a snake. And yeah, let's change our color over here just so we can differentiate between the two. And then let's change the size over here. Let's change it to a width of like eight and a height of like five. Let's bring this all the way back here. Rotate it 90 degrees, uh, 90 degrees. And bring that up a bit. So now if we have to press play, they're gonna shoot and it's gonna knock all these particles away. Uh, that's because of the fact that at the moment, if we had to change the display to spheres, we're shooting big spheres over here, and that's way too big. So let's first off turn the speed down to 50 and the radius to 1 and the variation of 1.5. You can obviously increase the size if you want to, but I liked it where all the rocks were kind of similar size. And now when we press play, look what happens. The particles go in and it mixes with the other rock fluids over here or particles cool so how do we make it now that these particles follow a certain path we can do that by first creating a spline so let's go over here let's just create a little path that we want these to follow uh, in case something like that should be fine uh, Yeah, I mean, doesn't really matter too much. Uh, yeah, I think go in and change it the way that you want, but I think for now this should be fine. You can use almost anything if you want. You can even use like one of these splines over here to get a specific approach. Uh, but yeah, in the last tutorial, we used the uh, simulation and we used a field force. X particles has a thing, similar thing, but in X particles, it's called a flow field. And that is what we're going to get to get this effect. So. Let's take our flow field and just make it smaller. Let's change it to just about the size of our collider over here. Doesn't really need to be too big. Uh, I've noticed if it is quite big that it does make it run a little bit slower. So if you just make it a little bit smaller, especially because we don't need any of it outside. And then inside over here, at the moment it's set to random. We want to change that from random to a long spline. And now we can take our spline and put it in here. And now you'll notice that we are getting a similar shape to the spline. So let's just hide our water for now. And if we have to press play, you can see it kind of goes along the path. But it's not enough. So let's go over here and increase the strength to 100. And now look at that. It follows the spline perfectly. We can also turn down the cell size and this will just make it so that it sticks to it a little bit more. I think this is better for now because when we interact with the other particles over here uh, it does slow it down a bit. If we have to press play now you'll notice that everything moves along and this does look but it is definitely not the effect that we are looking for. So we can easily fix that by going into our water rock over here, going to modifiers and then putting our flow field inside of it. And now when we press play, look at that. They go along and it moves along the path over there. That is super cool. So I think it's a little bit too much particles. So let's go over here and turn down maybe let's say 300. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I think that is a little bit better. Cool. So now you'll notice that what's happening is that these particles are going in and they're mixing with the other fluids. Um, this is nice, but uh, if we had to look at our reference over here, you'll notice that these rocks are actually above the surface of the other rocks. So how can we do that? We can go into our snake emitter over here and go to extended data, and we can go to fluid data. Seeing as though we're using fluid effects, we can change the density of these particles. So at the moment, both of these are set to a thousand. But yeah, if we had to change this density to 500, It'll be half the density of the other particles and now they'll kind of float above them. 
which is exactly what we're looking for. I also noticed that if we had to just turn the viscosity down by a bit, I found that 10 was quite a nice number. We get a really nice result. And now, these particles are moving along the surface of the other rocks, but they aren't kind of mixing. If you want them to mix, just mess around with the density over here and you can get some different results. Just for my render, I liked that it was separated from the others, but they still interact with each other. Cool, so at the moment, uh, if we had to put in our rock geometry and everything is going to be facing the exact same direction, we don't want that. Um, I can actually just show you now, so if we change this to display, and we go with boxes filled, everything is facing, you know, one direction, and that does not look very nice, especially when you add in the geometry, it will not look great. So we can fix that by going into the extended data and turning on rotation. For these rocks, I'm going to set it to just random, so that we have a random variety over here. And same with our snake over here. Let's set that to random. So let's change this display to boxes as well, just so we can see. And now each of these are gonna come in at a different angle. So you could change uh, this to tangential, but I found that everything ends up kind of flowing in the same way which can look quite nice because it kind of follows the direction of our flow field over here. But I think random does look a little bit better. Uh, but yeah, I guess that's up to you at the end of the day. We can add a little bit more variety to our rotation by going into modifiers and adding a XP spin. And if we just set this to something small like 0.5 on each of these, then over time, there will just be a slight rotation to each of these particles, which can look quite nice. Awesome, so yeah, that is the tutorial. I, I guess I can show you guys how to go about rendering this, but I mean, there's a bunch of tutorials on that, and I've done it multiple times, but hey, I might as well. Uh, let's export our rock over here. Okay, we got a rock. And we got a crashed scene. I have no idea why this happens. I don't know if, oh, sorry. I don't know if you guys had a similar thing, but this happened to me earlier today as well, where by adding in some geometry, for some reason, all the particles disappear. I have honestly no idea why this happens. I've never seen this happen before but for some reason it's doing it to me multiple times today. And also when I even throw it into another project, it's the same thing. No idea why that's happening. Um, yeah, let me just save and I'll come back. So my file crashed, I mean, some 4D crashed and I did it before I could save. So yeah, make sure you save. Um, yeah, I have no idea why kind of messes up when I export from bridge. If anyone has any idea why this is happening, please share it in the comments. You know, we're all here to learn. Uh, but yeah, so I'm just gonna open up my actual project file over here and I'll just show you how I went about doing it. So I've got my two rocks over here. These are kind of the same rocks from the previous tutorial, just some like procedural rocks. And what I'm doing is, all I'm doing is on each of these, I'm adding a uh, octane tag, same with like redshift, redshift tag, and then just in the particles over here, I have my multiple different uh, rocks. But if we want to get it that these rocks have the same color over here, all we need to do is, let's go, where's our big rock, big high. So, uh, I guess because I did a procedural rock, um, I did it a little bit differently, but say now you're exporting from Bridge and you have a specific texture that you want to do, all you need to do is go over here and grab a instance color, change to particle, drag in the particle that you want, in which case this would be water because we want to get these shapes over here. And then what you would do is you would put a multiply node a multiply node and you would multiply 
the instance kind of over here by the original color of the rocks. And then each rock will kind of, will keep, still keep the same texture, but then I'll have a different color over here. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please consider giving it a like and subscribe. And yeah, if you're interested in this project file, it will be up on my Patreon with a bunch of other project files and other tutorials. So yeah, if you are interested in that, uh, it is in the link in the bio. But yeah, I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you guys next week. Have a good one. Cheers.